Welcome back to Beats with Kelly Kennedy from Our Heart to Yours. And today, our fifth show is the icing on the cake for me because when I met this woman, Dr. Mindy Peltz, I felt like, oh my gosh, our two energies are going to collide and the whole world <laughs> is going to know what's going on. Because between so the true. two of us, she's on the West Coast and I'm on the East Coast. And I think we're creating this fire between us. And oh my gosh. she has an amazing presence in this world of education. And I, I invite, and I'm so excited to have Dr. Mindy Peltz here to explain to you how your body really works in, in fasting and autophagy and the cellular detox. And so thank you so much, Dr. Mindy Peltz, extraordinaire. Oh my gosh. Chiropractor. You know, if you have any questions about resetting your body, she's the woman to do it. She is the reset setter queen. Thank oh. you, Dr. Mindy Oh, thank you. And I love that. I got chills when you're like, you know, our energies were colliding because I, I know like you, I am in disbelief uh, about the fear around the, that the world has around their health right now. And I'm like, come on, people. We just need a little lesson in the immune system. We need a little lesson in how the body works. And once you understand that this miracle you're living in can do so many incredible things. You will never fear a virus again. You will never fear a virus again. So when COVID started on March 13th, I felt like I went on vacation, was able to finally spend time on the things I wanted to do. And I've watched you. I know that's exactly what you've done. You've delved deep into your health. You haven't worried about this for one nope. second. I have no, I have zero worry. I have such, for me, for my family, for my 80 year old parents, we have a plan. We know the power of the body and we are not living in fear. We are, we are in action mode. So let's jump, let's just dive in. Power of the body. What does that mean? Well, okay. So here, let's go back. Here's what I always say. Let's go back to when you were in the womb. So oh, wow. we're going way oh, back. We're going way back. So when you were in the womb, an egg and a sperm came together and they started to multiply. And right. the very first thing that gets formed is the brain and the spinal cord and all of the nerve roots. The second thing that gets formed is the, is the skull and the spine, and then the organs get put in place. So this nervous system has an intelligence to it. The just like, and you and I have geeked out like just as much as you love like the lymph system, like I feel like the nervous system is also this system we need to honor. And in this initial period when you were being created, there was an intelligence that was creating you. And when you came out, just think about the birth process. When a baby yeah, comes out, that you, there's no educated brain. We've tried to make it more educated by up, upping the C-section rates. But in general, you could put a woman in the woods and her body would know how to deliver a baby because there is an intelligence inside of you. Well, the thing that most people don't realize is that once you were born, that intelligence didn't leave you. That intelligence is still there. You have just been brainwashed by people telling you, keep your baby inside, use antibacterial soap, make sure your baby doesn't get exposed to a lot of bacteria. And the messaging that you have been given is that you are weak. And so we have to bring back the messaging and go back to the beginning and realize how powerful we were designed to be. You know, this is why Mindy and I are talking, Dr. Mindy and I are talking. I need her no disrespect by calling her Mindy, but honestly, You call me whatever. Like you call me whatever like, you want. We, we didn't even meet a year ago, and I feel like we've just been simpatico ever since. And, you know, that's so true. I say that all the time. Think about that. It's amazing that you have sex with somebody, and then a baby is born, typically 90 eight percent of the time with ten fingers ten toes two eyes one nose everything in place it's miraculous and you're not doing anything you're not telling it oh you're not well, doing today anything. you gotta create the brain and today you yep. gotta and say that it just does it on its own and and even to get to the point of conception there's a lot of sperm and a lot of eggs typically three or four are fertilized and the innate intelligence goes well you guys aren't going to survive yep. so the strongest one survives so if you got to the point of life you're a fighter Yep. Your immune system is strong yep. and you got to keep, and you're going to keep going and your body has an, an ability to desire that. Just like my husband and I were talking about this the other day. If you go to squish an ant, the ant doesn't go, oh, you can squish me because I'm not really good enough to live. The ant's going to try to run out of the way because it's, it's got innate intelligence to survive. Yep. Every human, every being on the planet has an innate intelligence to survive. Yep. Yep. Oh, Amen, Mindy, sister. I'm so glad you took that <laughs> Yeah, and, and so if, you, if you doubt it, do this, cut your finger, 
and then walk and then never think about it, wrap a Band-Aid around it, and then take that Band-Aid off in three days. What is the intelligence of your body done? It created its, it repaired it. If you get an infection, what does the body do? The body goes, oh my gosh, there's a foreign invader in here. Let me burn, let me raise the temperature so I can burn it out, create some mucus so that we can do away with this infection. But what and, we've been taught is yeah. I'm uncomfortable. Uh, let me medicate it. And that's what's happening right now is like, there's a virus that we don't understand. Although I, in the research I've done the last four months, we understand a lot about it. Just nobody's talking about it. Um, but we go, I don't understand this. Let me stay inside. Let me mask up because nobody's been taught that their immune system can handle this. And, you know, there, I'm an evolutionary biologist that knows that God created evolution. So let's just get that out of the way. Okay. Awesome. Um, and within that, the innate intelligence, you cannot evolve if you don't have uncomfortableness, time, ah, times so of uncomfort. True. There's no comfort in growth, none. Yep. And you know, I've done a lot of personal growth, but I've done a lot of physical changing too, and none of it yep. was comfortable. The first time I had a chiropractic adjustment after my spine was compressed from a car accident, it was certainly uncomfortable. Oh, I bet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it has allowed, now I love it and I crave it. First time I inverted, super uncomfortable. First time I did lots of things, right? But that allowed my body to change and grow. And now I'm a 46 year old woman that has no pain, no illness in her body. She feels like she's 12. And yet when I was 23, I felt like I was 90. Yep. Because that the body has the ability to grow and change. And I know exactly. Mindy has a very similar story. She had, tell your story for a second. Well, I just want to say, is that like the first time I got on the presso? Oh God, yes, let's throw Prezzo. Let's talk about that. Can we talk about that? Because... Let's talk about that. It's perfect. So she does Flow Prezzo. We're, we're at a seminar together. We're demonstrating Flow Prezzo for all the incredible doctors that were there learning about all sorts of how to live it to leave it, how to really live by this and not just talk about it, but they actually do this. And so part of it is they get care. So we were showing them Flow Prezzo and she does it the first day. And the next day she comes to me and goes, what'd you do to me? You broke me. And I was like, I think I actually swore. I think I swore. I was trying to keep it. I know, I know. We, no for, your, knows. for your show, we won't swear, but I think it was a little stronger than that. It, it was very much stronger. It was very much my language. Yeah. And I, I very much turned around and go, hold on something blank. <laughs> Don't blame me for your blank body. <laughs> That's your body moving your crap. It's not yep. my fault. <laughs> yep. Well, and that's why that's why I said it that way, because I knew, you know, I'm like the first one to sign up. Put, yeah, do whatever you want to do to me. And then I had this strong detox reaction. I was emotional. I was like snot was coming out. And I'm like, and then I just joked. I'm like, I, my colleagues were like, what's going on with you? And I'm like, oh, Kelly messed me up. She yeah. messed me up. And then, of course, they all knew because they know that there's a moment when you go to repair the body that you're going to be uncomfortable. And I think and then, we don't allow that in our healthcare. We don't make room for that. It's a good point. We're, we're in a suppress in this society that Mindy and I and many others are here to change. It's not about suppression. You spoke earlier about fevers being feverile. And having a fever is the body's a natural way to handle yep viruses. Yep. 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 Uh, for sure. I mean, I used to, when my kids were little and they would get a fever, I would wrap them up in a blanket. I put them on the couch. We'd get them adjusted, get them some, some good supplements. And I said, the doctor inside of you is on the job. Let's let that doctor do its job. And they, you know, we put them in front of the TV and just let the innate intelligence take over. And yet most people take their kids to the pediatrician, get them on antibiotics, they get them on medications to bring the fever down. We have, and, and actually this pertains to what's going on in the world right now. Our healthcare system has taught us to distrust symptoms, to medicate symptoms, and now we have a world full of immune compromised people that do not know they're immune compromised. And so when we look at the statistics on how this virus is spreading, it's spreading to the immune compromised but the immune compromised people appear healthy. They just don't know they're immune compromised. That's right, because people think they're immune compromised if they have a diagnosis. And what you and I know is that, well, if they have a root canal, if they have yep. silver fillings, if they have a metabolic disorder, which is 80% of the population, 
yep. thyroid issue, an adrenal issue, then to the point where your blood work has changed, then your metabolism is crashing and that is all affecting the whole system. Yep. And you're right that 100% people are unaware that they're sick. They don't know. And they, they, because if I walk into my medical doctor and I'm like, well, I'm, I'm 50. So if I'm 50 years old and I'm like, she's I, a great 50, let's just uh, applaud her for how amazing <laughs> she is at 50. Thank you. Thank you. So if I walk in, I say, Hey, you know what? I'm actually, you know, doing pretty good. Um, and I have a little low energy. What they're going to do is their standard blood panel. They're going to take look at my cholesterol. They're going to look at my blood pressure. Let's say they find my blood pressure is high. They may put me on a, a medication or they, my cholesterol is high. They'll put me on a statin and they'll say, you just need to take this, but overall you're healthy and healthy. The we need to take back healthy because yeah. healthy is not just symptom free. That's right healthy is what is going on how strong is your immune system what's your blood sugar levels like how strong is your is your nervous system uh what's going on with your lymph all of these things need to be measured so that we can like like let's use my parents my 80 year old parents as an example when this virus came to town what i i sat them down and i said you got to get into my clinic, get on in my hyperbaric oxygen chamber. You got to get on my PEMF so we can power up your cells and you got to get off the sugar and you got to get your hands in dirt and get some extra sleep. And we're going to power up your immune system. And then we're going to slowly expose you to different environments. My 80 year old parents are healthier right now. My dad, he was just here in my clinic. They are healthier today than they were when we went into quarantine. I have chills and my husband and I feel the same way about a few of us that have taken this opportunity to go, oh, I have time. I'm going to go do the things I tell everybody to do all the time that I hardly have time for myself yep. because I'm so busy spreading the word, but we're going to take this opportunity to yep. do this. And my HRV, my CRT, all my regulatory testing, my live blood look better than they ever have. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I did the same thing. I saw that. I saw what you were doing and you did yep. your fasting and you did everything because so essentially you took control. Because yep. you're not waiting for somebody to tell you you're sick. You're not yep. waiting for somebody to tell you you have a virus because you know you have the ability to enhance this. You know, just for giggles the other day, I typed into Wikipedia at boosting immune system. You want to oh hear God. what the list was? Yeah, please tell me. I'm scared. Is it going to make me drink mad? Water. It, was, it was drink water, sleep, eat your vegetables. Interesting. Go outside, which okay, was that's interesting. Good. Vitamin D Which important. was interesting because everybody's like, go outside, go outside. But yeah, Wikipedia says go outside, boost your immune system. And there was one more that was like, so like basic level of understanding, but really missing the whole note. Yeah. You know, I you know? put, I put a post on my personal Facebook page that said, the enemy is not the virus. The enemy is the food industry. What are right. you going to do to change your food? And I would say like 70% of the people were like, right on. Of course, I have a lot of naturopathic doctors and chiropractors on my page, but 30% of the people said, this doesn't make sense. I don't know what you're talking about. What about the people that can't afford to eat from whole foods? And I, that just fueled me even more to help people understand what they can do on a limited budget. This is why fasting is so great and what they can do to support their immune system and not just put on the mask and shelter in place and be in fear you know, growing your own vegetables, growing it, you know, you, you don't have to have a big yard. You can have some pots in your house yep. and a window. You yep. don't, you can do this in New York city. You can do this anywhere. Right. Yep. And, and you can grow some of your own vegetables. You can find local farmers and lots of them will ship to you. You yep. do not have to go to whole foods in particular. Nope. Okay. I will give you actually two things that are completely free intermittent right. fast. And we can talk about the science behind that and get off the sugar because the one thing we know about the coronavirus is it uh, camouflages itself in fructose. So your, your immune system will, will not detect it. It will take a longer time to detect it if you're sitting there slurping down sodas and eating food that's especially high fructose corn syrup. If you look at statistically across the world, the, the countries that are consuming the most high fructose, fructose corn syrup is America. And we have not 
I mean, you don't hear the other countries, I mean, Mexico just started, but that we probably toxified their food too. So, but it, you know, it really is our country suffering the most because our food is crap and, our, and we're eating too much sugar. And so when you put food in that's crap, you get crap here yeah. because, you know, I have a car that specifically only can handle the midline or better gas. If you put the crappy gas in it, my car is not going to run as well. Well, you know, this is my temple and what I put in it, you know, I am just a accumulation of the food that I eat and the things that I experience. But from a physical perspective, this is the bananas and the blueberries and the kale and the tomatoes and the avocados and you know, all the things that I love the most. Those are my top five foods. I love <laughs> you know, it. Those... We, we, we should get you a shirt that has like all, I'm going to, I'm going to try to find a shirt that has like all your vegetables and stuff and you can wear it back around and you go, this is what I'm made of. You want to see what I'm made of? That's, that's right. I, I'm the reluctant carnivore, you know, in this fasting world, I, I eat very little animal protein. I eat just enough that I can not die because I just don't really like it a lot, but I uh -huh. love vegetables and I love good quality fruits and berries and stuff. But that's what people forget. You know, if you eat McDonald's, if you take your mask down and you eat your McDonald's, that's not a picture of health, yeah. right? And, and that food is going to give you crap on the way out. So you've got to know what you're putting in. And if you are one of those people that's watching this and you need help, please reach out to Dr. Mindy. Please reach out to us at NotMeds. We will find resources for you. We yep. will help you find local farmers networks out there because what, that's what we know that this world needs. And yep. between the East and West Coast, we got it covered. Absolutely. Um, and we have enough energy to take over the whole United States. So We do. You know what? I can't. I heard this the other day. I was actually interviewed by a guy on his, um, on his podcast. It's like Peak Performance, and he is a, a filmmaker, and he's doing a film called Food Lies. And he was saying, you know, when we put the mask on, we need to think of it as a symbol of keeping the junk out. And I was like, that's brilliant. Every time you go to put your mask on. There, what your, pro your brain is probably thinking is, oh, I need to not get the virus. But what I would encourage people to do is every time you put that mask on, think I'm keeping junk out. I am not going to eat the crappy food. I'm not going to eat sugar because that is equally, if not more important. In fact, the, I mean, the mask is, can, can have some really harmful effects. And so when we put it on- But that's a positive intention you can throw at it to, that's to right. turn it around. Exactly, you got it, exactly. <laughs> let's, let's take back the mask and let's make it a symbol of something different. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. And, and if you have trouble getting off sugar, read Get Off Your Acid by Dr. Gerald Geoffrey and he takes you step-by-step step how you can break your sugar addiction. And a lot of it's through intermittent fasting. So let's yeah. talk about what a lot of people know a little bit about intermittent, fa intermittent fasting, but let's talk about the science behind it. And because yeah. if you want to know how to do it, Dr. Mindy's got tons of videos on her YouTube channel, step-by-step. Step. She's got programs. You're in the middle of a program now, aren't you? Um, well, you know, right now we're doing fast training week. So we do one week every month on all our platforms. It's free and you can, you can learn to fast with us. Um, and then we're about to do a metabolic reset in a couple of weeks where we teach you how to get out of metabolic syndrome, which is so important now because that's a huge, huge comorbidity. 80% of our population. If yep. you aren't the 80%, please share this with who is in your life the yes. 80%, so they can reset their metabolism with Dr. Mindy, and then their Absolutely. body will work for them. You know, this isn't like I'm waiting for something to happen to me. This is a machine that I get to utilize. This is a tool that yep. I get to utilize, and I want to sharpen my tool. And yep. how do I sharpen my tool? I sharpen the knives in my house. Why won't I sharpen this tool? You yep. know, doing yep. breath work, doing movement in the morning, having peace inside, and then choosing the proper foods. And at the right time, I eat those foods. So Ab Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Intermittent fa fasting, there, um, if you are, as uh, I'll explain the science behind it, and then if you're still dubious, go to my YouTube channel. I have a video that says something along the lines of like, why your doctor should be recommending intermittent fasting. So New England Journal of Medicine came out this year or last year and said that they reviewed over 1,500 different peer-reviewed journal studies, articles on intermittent fasting, and they are now declaring that intermittent fasting should be the first thing that you do in advising patients on their health path. Okay, how many doctors well, are doing that? Well, I'll tell you, I met a 70-year-old woman yesterday. 
two days ago, talked to her on the phone. Her husband was diagnosed with diabetes. The doctor said, okay, we're going to put you on a medication. She goes, and eh, let me do a little research. She does a little research. She starts intermittent fasting with her husband. He lost 30 pounds. She goes back to the doctor. The doctor, give him credit, has now incorporated it for every single Woo! client to do intermittent fasting because yes! the patient demanded it. And that's what this website's about. This is not for practitioners only. This is for the consumer. All of us are consumers of our health, of our wellness. And you need to demand that your, your advisor, your expert knows more than you and is doing it the way you want to not be dependent upon pharmacy. Yes. So I, on my YouTube channel, if you look in the notes, I put all the studies there with the one purpose in mind. So if you want to educate your doctor, go to show them those studies because that's the language in which they will respect and hear you and they're willing to speak. So, so intermittent fasting, let's talk a little bit about what it does. Um, there's several mechanisms that happen. 13, to me, intermittent fasting is 13 to 15 hours without food. I know some people believe it's every other day, like you eat one day, you don't eat the next, but I look at it as 13 to 15 hours without food. And there are really two major mechanisms that happen at that time frame of fasting. Um, one is that your body starts to make growth hormone. So if you are not motivated to, to lose weight, maybe you're motivated to slow the aging process down because growth hormone, it, you stop getting growth hormone after 30 or very little of it. And this is where the aging process starts. So when you tap into this growth hormone, they say it's like 1300% increase in growth hormone. Wow. And so every day, like you're getting a shot of growth hormone, it, it will slow down aging, but more importantly, it starts to initiate fat burning from your cells. So growth hormone you need for fat burning, and that happens at 13 to 15 hours. Now, we have also some other great research that's showing like breast cancer, women who have gone through chemo, recovered, and technically are considered cancer-free have 70% of a reoccurrence rate when they intermittent fast every day than women who don't. So intermittent fasting is... It is an incredible way to start the process of teaching your body to be a fat burner. So you're going to get that growth hormone. You're boosting your immune system. The other thing that's happening is because insulin has been down for a while, 13 to 15 hours, the intelligence of your body starts to go, huh, I don't really see any glucose coming in. We're not needing to stimulate more insulin. I think I stored some of that glucose and insulin years ago in fat. Why don't I go find that? Let me burn that. And then I won't have to rely on more coming in. That's the brilliance. You're awesome because that you talk, you do what I do. You, you speak doctor. You take a very complex thing and you make it very simple for people to understand. And, and I want people to understand, you know, she's not asking you to not eat for days on end. No. That's not what intermittent fasting is about. You have 24 hours in a day. And what we're saying is eat within a nine hour time period. Yep. So yep. you wake up, you get at nine in the morning, you eat, nine hours later, be done with eating. You yep. start at 10, nine hours later, be done with eating. This yep. is because what this grazing all day, the snacking all day, eating, you're never giving a break to the immune system. So it always, or to the system rather, so it always goes, oh, I, I know I'm getting to get food. I don't have yep. to go gets anywhere lazy. else and look at it. It gets lazy. Yep. And what you're doing is you're forcing it to be a little uncomfortable. You're forcing it to change and you're asking it to go look at your reserves. Yep. And the fat is also where the toxins are stored. Yep. So you need to let go of the fat so the toxins can come out as well. Yep, it, exactly. So it, to me, it's again, we're back at like anybody can do that. Like this doesn't cost any money. It doesn't take any time. It's so, free. Yep, it's free. It's free and there's support that's free through Dr. Mindy's YouTube yep. channel. Yep. How yeah. about that? Yeah, awesome. no, it, it's, That's it's awesome. I did a video on um, five steps to getting to a three day water fast. And I go through like, do the, you know, the exact things that you do um, because the longer you fast, the more miracles show up. So like at 17 hours, autophagy really starts to kick in. 
And with autophagy, What's autophagy? Explain to people yeah. what autophagy is for those that don't know. Thank I you. will. So autophagy, we're back at that intelligence. That autophagy is when, again, in the presence of no sugar and low insulin, the body goes, huh, okay, now I'm going to really need to get efficient because it's not coming. So it starts to clean up the cell inside and repair old cells. It starts to detox itself. And in some cases, it actually will create cell death. And cell death is called apoptosis. The miracle of cell death is if, that, if the intelligence decides that that cell is no longer a good cell and it kills it on its own accord because you've been fasting for 17 hours, if you hadn't been doing that, that cell may have turned into a cancer cell. Differentiated, meaning yep. changed and cause it to be acting bad and yep. causing a bad cell. Because we yep. fight cancers all day long, every day, 300 times a day or so, cells differentiate and turn bad when the environment is thus that it will continue to change and morph. But through autophagy, you have the exact opposite situation. As you fast, you force the body to go into, hey, I wanna go clean out my closet because I don't have enough clothes in my regular house. So I'm gonna go into my closet and get some, some clothes. And now my closet's clean. Instead yep. of my closet being full and full and full and full because I have just tons of clothes. I keep going to the store and get more clothes. And I get into those, you with me? Good. Yeah, it's like, a, I always say it's like a Roomba. I don't have a Roomba, I'd like a Roomba, but the Roomba, you just put it down on the ground, right? And it cleans up yeah. your floor. That's what, that's what autophagy is. Um, is it just as your body, you're, you're, you're tapping self. into a mechanism that is self-healing, self-detoxifying, and you're asking the body to do what it was programmed to do. And we've never been taught this. And part of why we've never been taught this is because there's no money in teaching it. The, there's, they've tried to create a drug to stimulate autophagy, and they can't find one. So you have to understand what, if this is new information, it's because people, you know, big pharma doesn't, doesn't have a financial impact to get this out there. And the reality is, as homo sapiens, you know, we've lived in an in abundance for, we'll call it a hundred years. Yeah. Okay. It hasn't been quite a hundred years, but where we've had true abundance of food, where we can get oranges any time of the year and we have plenty of food and we have meat in our freezers and we have all sorts of canned vegetables and all this processed food essentially, but we still, we have access to food all the time. Yep. 400 years ago, people did not have access to food no. that we have today. And yep. that's not a long time for our bodies. that hasn't had time to adapt to all the abundance and it's created all this illness, particularly in the most abundant country. America has the fattest, sickest, and the, spend the most about healthcare. Absolutely. This is insane. It's this insane. is not how the body works. You've yeah. got to force it to change and grow. Yeah. And we accept it. Like, like I think, I, again, I'm going to go back to the virus. Like, we are more willing to stay inside and, and put a mask on when we go outside than we are to change our food. Like, yeah. which is more uncomfortable? I, I'm going to say to me, it's more uncomfortable to stay inside and it's really uncomfortable to put that mask on. So I find, you know, it's just that people have not been taught. And if you go back to the caveman days, when they woke up and they were like, oh, it's morning time, they came out of the cave, they didn't have a refrigerator, they didn't have food, they had to go find food. So how long did that take? It probably was somewhere in that 15 hour range between sleep and going and finding food, whether they collected berries or plants or they actually killed an animal. So your, bo I, your body is programmed to thrive so that in that fasted state, so you can go find food. So what the, the biggest thing I find people say is like, oh, I'm gonna be tired, it's not safe. Well, the body is programmed to go without food because in the caveman days, it had to go without food so it could go find food. Otherwise the human species wouldn't exist at this moment. And, and I will say though, it makes, I would, most people, it probably makes them feel uncomfortable when they first start it, right? Because they're so sure. used to poking it the, at the bear, beating their blood sugar. They're so yeah. used to feeding their blood sugar all the yeah. time 
that when their body starts to feel a little off, they go, oh, I need to eat. And I know through your program, it was funny, I, I drove about 10 hours the other day with my son and we listened to a lot of your podcasts. Oh no, said, poor kid. Oh no, he's so used to me talking. He was like, is that you or is that Dr. Mindy? He couldn't oh, I love the it. Difference. Oh, and that's awesome. It was great. And uh, at one point we were driving all of a sudden he goes, mom, I think I want to do the fast with her. You know what? So, it's so funny you say that because in August, we're going to do a family fast. He's seven. We did it because we pretty much intermittent yeah. fast constantly. So really cool. So he backed out his breakfast. He's now eating breakfast at about Love 11 a.m. And it was a little uncomfortable for him that first day. He was like, but normally we get up and eat. I get up and eat. I said, yeah, I know, hon. So you're going to back it out a little bit. It's okay. Love it. And, you know, I have a tendency, I used to have a tendency for blood sugar spikes. Oh, and so too. I was used to having, you know, I got to eat. I got to eat right now. No, no, I have to eat. The whole world has to stop because I'm going to eat. Oh, me but, too. But Mindy's awesome at teaching you how to do this gradually. We're not asking you to throw everything out. We're asking you to make some steps in the right direction. If, if you're eating over 20 hours, when that's back to 19, yep. if you're right. And it's just slowly. And yep. then your body will start to shift and change and it won't be so uncomfortable. Yeah. You know, if you think about it, uh, most people, what they do is they just wake up and they eat and then they eat all day. And there's been debates over the years about six meals a day, eight meals a day, three meals a day. And what I ask people to do is let's change the thought on that and realize that there's a fasting window that you're going to, you're going to work on. And then there's an eating, qu the quality of the food you eat in your eating window that you'll work on. So the first step is to change your mindset that I eat all day. You want to start thinking, I'm okay. No, I don't eat right now. I'm fasting. And this helps in the beginning when you get hungry because you're like, you're, the, in, the incl inclination will be, I need to go get food. But if you keep reminding your body, no, I'm fasting. No, I'm fasting. It's almost like your body listens to your thoughts and says, okay, I get it. You're fasting. I'm going to go ahead and make some chemicals to make that a little easier for you. And there will be a moment that ketones will, will kick in as soon as the body registers no food is coming. And then when those ketones kick in, I always, for me, it's like a limitless feeling. I, my brain gets sharper. My energy gets better. So what, what's a ketone? Okay, awesome. So ketones are what the liver produces when sugar starts to go down, when your blood sugar starts to go down. And ketones are, will go to the brain, they're neuroprotective. So you can actually start to regenerate any tissue in the brain. Um, they also will go and help burn fat. They are reparative. So the, the only way you get a ketone is through fasting. You can't, or you could get it through lowering your carbs, but you get it through bringing down your blood sugar. That is how you get ketones. It is what I have found most people have never experienced until they start to work with fasting principles and then they bring their carbs down. So essentially what we're saying is if we change our behaviors, we engage two programs, autophagy and ketones, yep. which are the natural ways that the body mobilizes and, and efficiently and effectively uses the stores to allow for the highest benefit of the human being to be the healthiest and the wellest, the wellest, that's a new word I just made up, the wellest, <laughs> it worked. That, it, that it can be because the whole job, even since the moment of conception, is yep. for this entity to survive and thrive. Yes, we are programmed for survival and the body will do everything at any cost to make sure you stay alive. So what you don't realize is that in that programming came all these miraculous processes and chemicals that you just haven't been tapping into because you've never been taught to fast. And I, and you know, if you're listening to this and you're like, oh my God, I've been doing it all wrong, then what I would encourage you to do is start by pushing your breakfast back an hour. And then that'll suck for a while. That'll suck for the first couple of days. Just know that. Like if you go in thinking it's going to be wonderful and it's not, then you're going to think that Kelly and I are crazy. So just go push your breakfast back. You know it's going to suck. And then after- No, no, we're crazy because we're asking you to do something we know that's going to suck. That's why we're crazy. But that's <laughs> right. the thing, you know. I learned, I learned a lot of this medicine in Europe. And there was many times that I'd raise my hand and I'd be like, so what do you want the Americans to do? 
Mm. So what do you want the Americans to do? Because it was like, oh, put it up their nose, put it up their ass, you know, have them do this uncomfortable thing. Have, and I'm like, and what do you want the Americans to do? Yeah. Because it's just true. Like we are not accustomed to being uncomfortable. We live in a yeah. suppression society. Like, oh, don't let anybody know that you're uncomfortable. We need to talk about our shit more, literally. Women literally need to talk about their shit more. Yep. Because if you're uncomfortable in the bathroom, then your body's uncomfortable inside. We need to talk about our periods. We need to talk about what it's really like to have a baby super uncomfortable. We need to talk about <laughs> these things because yep. it, there is no growth in comfort. Again, we will repeat. And so I don't need to sidetrack because what you're talking about is awesome. So go back to what you were saying. Yeah. And on the, the level of discomfort, again, I would ask you what's more uncomfortable, masking and staying inside or doing some of the changes we're making. To me, they're both uncomfortable. Yep. So which, which discomfort do you want to do? And what I'm trying to get across to people is that if we could move everybody out of metabolic syndrome, as difficult as that would be for some people, I guarantee you it's more difficult to mask up and stay inside. That is way more difficult. So it's more but, difficult to sit home and think that something might come in and get me and then I have no control and I might just die. And right. I don't know how that's going to happen. That is super uncomfortable. Right. So you yes. have, we have two choices right now. Which discomfort do we choose? And if you choose the discomfort of making changes to your, how often you eat and the quality of your food, the beautiful thing is you're living in a body that knows how to, to respond to that. Whereas with the mask and the staying inside, that is a long, long, long process. What I'm telling you to do could be weeks and you're out of metabolic syndrome, that you're into this fat burning mode. So you get to choose weeks or the rest of this year, which discomfort would you like? And I think we need to put this all in perspective. And by pushing your breakfast back, what you're doing is you're telling your body, hey, I'm not going to eat all the time. So I need you, remember those, I know you don't know about those mechanisms. I haven't accessed them in years, yeah. but I really need them now. And so the body after a couple of days will start to make some ketones, you'll get some growth hormone, and then you push it back another hour and then another hour and you keep going each hour. And before you know it, it's 15 hours every day. And you're like, you're not hungry, your mental clarity's up, your belt loops are going, you're having to tighten your belt, you feel great, you're sleeping better, and now you're, to me, you're in the door. You're in the door of health, and now what we can start to do is, okay, let's talk about the quality of your food. So before you even go to the quality of your food, let's, go, let's look at changing how often you're eating. And that is such great practical information, Dr. Menin, because people, they want to make changes. Oh, I can't afford it. Okay, here's a free thing I can do. Shifting what it, now I can look at the quality and I can change one thing at a time yep. so that when I turn around in two, three months, everything has changed yep. so that we have control and we feel that, you know, if I'm doing something for it and I see the response in my body, I'm no longer waiting for the gun to go off that's going to kill me. I know that I can put my shield up and go, well, it can't get me. Yep. Well, it can't get me because the thing is, is that we are more bacteria, virus, and fungus, and molds than we are cells. Yeah, hundred to but, one. Like, what is and, wrong with us? Why are we trying to manipulate human cells? I mean, fasting is autophagy for human cells, but we're not like. What What are we doing for these bacteria? That's a whole nother podcast. An entire and what are we doing about the three times of the lymphatic fluid versus the one? It's a three to one ratio of lymph to blood. And we talk about blood, but we don't talk about lymph. And this is, for me, where the immune system is enhanced and, and engaged based upon having the opportunity to go through autophagy and to allow ketones to take over to make that sharpness. And, you know, practical information is what we're looking for. We're not selling a product. We're not we're trying to engage you in your own health and realize that you have control over your body. And from the moment of conception to now, your body wants to live. And the good and the bad news is you have responsibility there. Yes. Oh, and I think that is the biggest thing is that you got to take personal responsibility back. Like, and for, you know, your listeners are probably interested, my guess, is in learning how to do that. And in that, when you make that decision, that line in the sand, that I am not going to give my power away, I'm going to take my power back, you have to understand that there will be a learning process. 
because the world lives totally different than the way Kelly and I are speaking right now. So you've got to start tapping into information that, that empowers you and tell and reminds you. It's like almost like you were born and you fell asleep. And you fell asleep because all of your healthcare gurus are in white coats with stethoscopes around their neck and they have told you you are weak whether they tell you that verbally or they've told you that in the way that they've taken care of your health. And we are, right now, what I would encourage you to do is realize you have an opportunity to wake up, but it, you're going to have to stop relying on everybody else to help you. You're going to have to go, okay, I'm going to help me. Now's the day that I help me. And when you make that decision, dive into the information and become this fan of your own body. It's it, we like take the power back and realize you are flipping miraculous. Yeah, I always say it was like you were sure. born in a Lamborghini. The problem is that nobody gave you the owner's manual. That's so you right. think you're driving around in a Kia and you don't even realize it, but you were, you were given a, a Lamborghini for a body. And now let's figure it, let me give you the user manual and let's start using it right. You know, the, the body regenerates, the organs regenerate their, you know, health. I, I, you talked earlier and I know we've gone a little long, but this is important information. That's okay, I love health. talking to you. Me too. Hell, I hope everybody else is enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> um, health we're, is having, not a we're having fun. I don't know about everybody else, but we're having health. a great time. We're having an amazing time. <laughs> but health is not a destination. Mm. Health is a decision that we make every single oh. day. Oh, you know, it's, it's not like, oh, I arrived and now I'm healthy. And so everybody looks at us and go, oh, Kelly and Mindy are healthy, but I can never live like they did. Yep. Well, no, that's not true. I didn't yep. used to live like this. It, I've been living like this for 23 years, you guys. I started yep. my journey 23 years ago. The first person that said to me, I grew up in upstate New York around dairy farmers. We weren't, but every one of my cousins, my uncles, the land around, everybody's dairy farmers. I grew up on cow dairy, like processed cow dairy. The first time I got engaged in this world, they said, get off all the cow dairy. And I was like, what are you, the antichrist? Are you right. kidding me? Like yep. everybody, like if you didn't have milk, it was sacrilegious. And I ate cheese and milk and pizza. That was, and bagels. I was a vegetarian. That was the majority. Oh, I was a diet. vegetarian too for many years. And I got, I was so sick. I was a vegetarian that didn't eat vegetables. Oh, except gosh. for broccoli. I've always eaten broccoli. But I was so sick because I was eating all these carbs and processed foods. And I just started to go, okay, I'm not going to eat dairy for a while. And I did that for a long time until the next thing became, that became comfortable. And now I'm going to try the next thing and the next thing yep. and the next thing. And I'm a flexitarian now. That means mm. I'm flexible. 80% of the time I eat really, really well. And 20% of the time when my son wants to, he was, we were traveling and he wanted to have a, it was basically a Shirley Temple kind of thing. And I was like, Okay, it's got high fructose corn syrup in it. You just do whatever your body's going to do because your body can handle that. We've yep. primed the pumps. I know your body can manage that because it's the first time you've ever had probably right. high fructose corn syrup so, in your life. So it's okay. Yeah, it's so the, there's a term called metabolically flexible. And I actually think this is the state we all want to get into because I, again, if we put ourselves in the shoes of the listener, you know, people could say, oh, well, that's easy for you guys to do. You've been doing it so long. But what I love about the state that I'm in is if I do want sugar, I can go have sugar. If I go, like if like last year I went to Italy, I ate so much pasta and bread and drank wine. I didn't gain a pound. Nothing happened to my health because I'm metabolically flexible. So the first can you stand goal- up? Can you stand up and show everybody <laughs> what you look like? She's strong, uh, she's powerful. Look at those <laughs> arms on her. It's actually one of the reasons that I started- really? Watching you oh a little God, bit. I gotta get some. And I'm like, dude, I, I'm not following fasting well <laughs> enough because Mindy did something the other day and I was like, shit, man, I need to work my arms more or something. Why am I not building <laughs> muscle? So I watched your podcast on how to build muscle better because awesome. I know there was something I was missing. Yeah. And you know, you're you're just a wealth of information. This is certainly not our last podcast. With oh you. no, let's keep talking for sure. But let me just make one more point about yeah. metabolically flexible because we've yeah. seen across all of our platforms. We've seen the hesitations that people have. And I just, again, want to tell you guys that the first step, if you're listening to this, 
is you got to take yourself out of this sugar burning mode. And you do that by doing the fasting that I just recommended. And if you want to add into that, start to minimize some carbohydrates, start to cut some of the sugar back. Now what you're doing is you're telling your body, hey, my blood sugar is not going to spike as high as it used to do. So I want you to become a fat burner. And when it switches over to being a fat burner, now everything works. Your brain works, your energy works, your muscles grow, everything works. But the more you're in that fat burning place, we now say that you're ready to be metabolically flexible, which means you can step out, you can go to Italy for two weeks and eat all the sugar, all the gluten, all of the wine that you want, and you can come home and you, you are still in a fat burning state. So your son who has grown up most likely, whether you real, realized it or not, you trained him to be a fat burner. He can step out, eat crappy food. And if he goes back to good food, he now is going to be fine. There's no, he doesn't just start gaining weight and getting sick immediately. He's skin and bones and all that. Yeah, so are my kids. My kids <laughs> are like, so thin. Yes. Like I wish, but you know, so are his father and I, like we never had an extra pound on us. It's well, that's not totally true, but as kids, we never had an extra pound on us because we have a high metabolism, but we've learned, I think my husband, when I first met him, he was like, I'm like, dude, I haven't seen you eat in like two days. And he's like, yeah, I'm eating air. And I'm like, what, what does that mean? And I, 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 I like that idea. That's I, I like, I like didn't like it. I was inflamed by it. And I'm like, no, no, no. You have to eat all the time. You have to eat all the time. And now here we are 20 years later and Dr. Pompin, Dr. Mindy, and everybody's like, no, intermittent fasting, autophagy, and I sits back goes, I told you, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's the evolution diet and all that, because we, we just have to remember that this body, this, this amazing organism that our creator has allowed us to be at, have our, as our vessel on this planet earth, which is our true heaven here on earth. Mm -hmm. And it can be an amazing life and living isn't inside the house with a mask on eating crappy food. It's also not paying so much attention to your food that you don't enjoy life. And I love exactly. Dr. Mindy's story that we are not on the top of some mountain going, oh, nobody can touch us. Not at all. We are real people yep. and we love having fun. And I love chocolate and I love oh, having too. fun with my friends. I don't really drink wine. I'm not a drinker, but I love, it's fine if you do, it's just not my thing, but I do love chocolate. And if you would like to send me some nice Belgian chocolate, you just feel free <laughs> to do so. Um, Ooh, but, I love it. Know, I'm going to find you some. Oh, I love Belgian chocolate. But you know, the, the thing is, is that if, if we treat our bodies well, our bodies will treat us well. Again, back to the tool, because this has an amazing intelligence in it. We just need to learn how to communicate with it, work with it, and let it work for us. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not very tech savvy, to be honest with you. This has been a huge obstacle for me to overcome this podcast and all this stuff. This is, it was a, I had to do emotional work on it. Like, you have no wow. idea. But I know what it is for me. It's because I know that it can work for me. It's just most of the time it feels like it works against me, mm. but that's because I just don't understand it. And as I've learned, as I've worked with my staff to help me to understand it, I find that I can use it better because mm. I understand it. that's no different than our bodies. We are that's a biological beautiful. computer and we need to reset it. Mm -hmm. And we defragment our computers, but we don't defragment our bodies. Every once in a while, we go, oh, it's time for a new computer because the operating system isn't working. Well, you don't get a new computer this time around, but you can get a new one. You can re-incite your operating system mm -hmm. because that's how the body really works. And if you did not feel my and Dr. H Mindy's hearts coming to you <laughs> directly, then I don't know what the hell's wrong with you because <laughs> we are giving of ourselves to you. We want you to understand this. We want this. you to feel this. Yep. We want you to live like we yep. do we live on the magic carpet ride yep. wiggle our nose and get what we want from yep. a physical perspective an emotional perspective a spiritual perspective and i know that she has a ton of fun in her life i, I know that she helps a, a thousand people a week if not more she helps yep. millions of people across the globe and that's what not meds naturally oriented therapists medically enlightened doctors and specialists is all about bringing you the real information for how your body really works and 
please, I encourage you, we'll put all Dr. Mindy's information below this show for the show notes. To, I learned that term from her, the show notes, to make <laughs> sure that you have access to her, you have access to this tribe. We welcome you to our tribe. Absolutely. Dr. Mindy. I thank you for being part of my tribe and, oh, and educating others. And I really look forward to having you as a, 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 a constant, let's um, do it. A constant guest on not meds and on, on the beats with Kelly Kennedy, because the autophagy, there's so much more to talk about there. Oh, there's, there's so a much lot. More. And so yeah. if you have questions, comments, concerns, please reach out to us. Please make one. We just ask your body. Actually, your body's asking you to do this. That's why you're here. Your body's asking you for this information and it wants you to take the first step. So just push your breakfast back by one hour. That's all the change you have to do as of tomorrow. Yep. Anything else you can add, Dr. Mindy? No. And then I'm going to ask you one more question. But I feel like you need a mic drop. That was really, really good. I was like, I got chills as you were speaking. I could not agree anymore. Um, no, I just, I, I hope you listen to this and you walk away from it believing in yourself, even if it's for one small moment. If you just had any glimmer that there is a power that you haven't been taught and that you can live in a high energy, high immune system, high brain clarity state, that is your birthright. It's just that nobody's been taught taught you that. So Join Kelly and I, and we want to teach it to you. We want you to believe in you again. Well, I'm already sweating from what you said, because the question I was going to ask you is, <laughs> <laughs> you already answered it before I asked, actually. Uh, okay. Well, it's because we're tuned into each other. Yeah. I have done this work for so long, and I've taken the pills, and I've done the drainage, and I've done the IVs, and I've done the injections, and I've done all the therapies, and I've done it all. But what I found more than anything was that opening my heart, finding true joy, finding my passion, and finding hope. When my husband, who is now my husband, put his hand on my body and said, we're going to get through this together. We're going to help you find how you can live pain-free again 23 years ago. Changed my world. And that's, this is our hand on your shoulder going, we got you. We're going to help you through this. But what's the one thing, I'm already crying, what's the one thing that you can add to, for this for people? Because all the pills and all the supplements, they're good to get you to a point. Yep. But the reality is, what? What's the basic of all life? If you have this, if you don't have this, you don't have health, which is what? Yeah, it, it's believing in yourself. You That's have right. to understand yourself because if you are just taking a pill because Kelly told you to do it or I told you to do it and it's a natural pill, but you don't understand what it's doing, that don't take the pill. This is That's why I right. love fasting is you take food out of the equation and then I want you to sit back and be in awe of what your body can do. And I just, I love what you said, your hand on the shoulder and it, you just know that you live in a miracle. And after this podcast, if you've never heard that before, it's time to believe in that miracle again. We need the world to see how miraculous they are. And then we will never have to fear another virus again. And I just got chills. So thank you so much, Dr. Oh, Mindy. Love you. Please make love you. Make sure to subscribe, hit the notification button, follow us. We'll see you next time on the Beats with Kelly Kenny. Truly from our heart to yours. We believe in you. You can do this. You have a miraculous body, as Dr. Mizzy said. Yep. See you next time. Awesome.